I kept having this urge to go outside, go to the park, find an empty field, take your shoes off, play this freaking song, and run around. (laughs) And I did exactly just that. I went to the park, and I ran around barefoot, listening to As It Was. And honestly, if you love that song as much as I do, please, please, one day, do it. Oh my goodness, it's so great. And there's no other song that I've ever, that has made me want to run around barefoot in an open field. Like, (laughs) but it was so worth it. His music makes me feel beautiful. And not like physically beautiful, but like life is beautiful. And I think as it was, became like a turning point for me. Because the, like before then, I wouldn't necessarily call myself a Harry Styles fan. And it's not because I didn't like his music, it's just that I wasn't listening to his music. <laughs> And so the album, what is that album called? Not the first one that he put out uh, as a solo artist, but the second one. I think that's the one with Watermelon Sugar and Fine Line. And oh, I love that album. Oh, it's so, so, so nostalgic. And I think nostalgic is an understatement. You know, it reminds me of like... um, like a sweet a sweet a pastry that you had as a child and it was like your favorite dessert ever when you got older you stopped eating it and then all of a sudden one day you come across that dessert again and you have it again for the first time since you were a child that's how like that feeling and that sensation that just home that's how his music feels it gives me that type of experience and I love giving it time I love giving it time before I go back and I listen to it because I just rediscover him I re I rediscover the feeling you know It also reminds me of love in the summertime. Love in the summer feels different than love in other months and other seasons. I'm not saying that love in the summer is superior. I'm just saying that it's different. It stands out. It's unique because of the warmth, the sensation on your skin. Those memories are just a little bit more vivid because they're warmer. And so I literally remember listening to Adore You. And I I honestly, people probably think I'm like losing it. Sometimes because I'm just a little bit carefree. And I remember listening to Adore You in the summer, just walking down the street with my headphones on. And I didn't, I really wasn't concerned about whether or not people were looking. I just love this song. This song makes me want to dance in the street like a freaking mad woman and just be happy. <laughs> That's what Harry Styles' music does for me. That's what Harry Styles does. Um, and then his other album, Harry's House, that's the one with As It Was. Yeah. That song, my favorite song on that. Excuse me. My favorite song on that is Love of My Life by y'all. That song, mm. oh my goodness. I painted to that song. I was I was surfing the music. But I'm not really like a playlist kind of girl. I'm more of a, like a one song on repeat, on infinite repeat type of girl. <laughs> Um, 
so I'm listening to all this different music and then I come across Love of My Life and it just makes me want to listen to it on a repeat that doesn't ever stop. That doesn't ever stop. Like if I lived in a universe where Love of My Life was the only song, I would be okay. It would fulfill me. It would fulfill my love for music. It's just such a such a great song. And so I put that on repeat and I started to paint him. Fun fact, Harry Styles is the only subject that was inspiring enough for me to pick up a brush and paint again and put paint on a freaking canvas. Just, he's a very beautiful man. I was like, oh my goodness, I need to paint this beauty. I need to paint it in the way that it makes me feel. And it worked. It worked. It worked. I don't have the painting anymore. Because I go through changes. (laughs) But I do have photos of the painting. And after, after I painted Harry, I got back into painting. I fell back in love with painting after I painted Harry Styles. That's deep. Whoa. (laughs) Ah. I do love that, um... That album, what is it called? Why isn't the name of the album? Probably because I don't listen to it track by track. That's not an album that I listen to track by track. I feel like if I listen to it track by track now, oh my goodness, I would appreciate it so differently. I would fall in love differently than I did when I would go to the album. And I would just pick songs, the songs that stood out to me, the songs that called to me, because not all of them called to me. But I also love Harry as an actor. He chooses such like uh, unconventional characters. Very unconventional characters. And I also love his interviews with Zane Lowe. Just because I like their energy together. (laughs) I like their conversations. I think Harry's house um, is... uh, mm, It felt so perfect to me. Perfect in a way that mm, made me question a little bit. And and everyone loves Harry's house. Don't get me wrong, it's 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 perfect. I just said it's perfect. It's beautifully composed. It just feels like super, super commercial I get reminded of music that I've heard before too much when I'm listening to it and I just want to enjoy him I just want to enjoy him but his sound is so pop that there's like other melodies and other songs happening subconsciously like in the back of my mind while I'm listening to the record and it just It's not very ideal. And Love of the Life is the only song that didn't... No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Is that true? Love of my life... It, it, oh. It reminds me of, like... The type of feeling that 2000s... 
2000s R&B love songs used to feel like. Those love songs was different, baby. Okay. <laughs> Those love songs, 2000s love songs, hit different, okay? And love of my life reminds me of that type of feeling. It just had a different character to it. But it, for me, is the only song off the album that, um, like, fully takes my mind and, like, pins it down and says, just be still. The rest of the album is a little bit, like, it feels like, um, it feels like a freaking, uh, a piece of sketchbook paper with a whole bunch of different doodles on it. And when you look at the paper, it looks cohesive. It looks like everything just goes together. But when you really pay attention to it, it's a bunch of it's a bunch of like little individual sketches. That's how Harry's house feels. I feel like it's abstract in that way. It's based in perspective and how you see things, how you see art. Um, hmm. I also love that Harry's, Harry's styles, Harry styles, Harry's style. Ooh, that Harry's style is fluid. He's fluid. Fluid. And I feel like out of everyone who is sort of like um in his his peers <laughs> his peers. I feel like out of all of his peers his fluidity feels the most wholesome. And um, it feels less rehearsed and practiced and like premeditated and overthought. Um. Because I think it works for him. Like, I feel like Harry is beautiful, not in a way that men are beautiful. Like, the type of beauty that Harry has, I don't think men in general possess. Somebody's getting to know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, a Harry Styles stand out there. Someone who is, like, truly his fan and truly in love with him knows exactly what the heck I'm talking about. <laughs> because my my little cousin is in love with Harry Styles. She loves him, like, so much. So much. So... I know that there's someone out there who knows what I mean when I say, if you really pay attention to his beauty, it's not, it's not like, like a masculine type of beauty. Yes, he's masculine, but I think, <clears throat> I feel like a hairy his music is assertive very assertive and I like that about it because when he's singing about love it's like not even about who he's singing to no 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 it's just the fact that he's singing about it like that he's choosing to sing about it that he's choosing to put it into a song you know that this is what he wants his music to be, to sound like. And even if it's not what he wants or what he didn't think his music would sound like, it's what came out. This sort of raw feeling. 
this raw quality to his music that sometimes makes me a little bit sad that he's like a mainstream artist because I would love to like only have Harry Styles to myself <laughs> like his music to myself if I had just discovered it on my own and you know he wasn't like a big star Because sometimes I feel like that changes it. Sometimes I feel like when it gets mainstream recognition, it's um, <sighs> I feel like it changes the quality of the work. Or at least how it's received. I feel like mainstream recognition changes everything for me. Because I think we all can agree that it's, it's great work. Which is why it's getting the recognition that it deserves. But then again, it makes me question how genuine truly is the inspiration if everyone um, is... inspired by it and I know that may sound like what but I mean it's just a question just a thought just a thought just a thought just a Even though the, the wind is blowing, even though the wind is blowing and it's cold, it's still a beautiful day. I think it's a beautiful day even when it's raining because I see the reflection of the sunny days. And I like appreciating all of the weather, you know. But sometimes I just want to be in nature. Sometimes I just want to be in nature away from human beings. <laughs> like, when I'm around human beings... See, I am a loner, okay? I'm a loner, so... I spend... More time alone and by myself than maybe the average individual. So when I do get around human beings, I feel like I'm able to enjoy it a little bit more. But I find that I prefer large, humongous crowds than intimate spaces. <laughs> I do because the energy is different with a huge, large crowd than... You know, like maybe just a group of people. I feel more connected in a large crowd than I do with a small group of people. When it comes to human interaction. And then there are moments where I just don't want to be around people at all. Which is like 90% of the time. 90% of the time I would rather be by myself or somewhere in the park or in the forest talking to the trees. The trees and the water and the sky. Mm. 
and all of the creatures of the earth. You know, that's how I would prefer to spend my time. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> It doesn't always work out that way. And that's all right. I can't have everything that I want. I don't want everything that I want. And I just realized that the other day. That if I had everything that I wanted, how would I know what was real? How would I know? If I didn't have, you know, that contrast, if I didn't have that reference of what it felt like when I didn't get what I want. But before I was talking about Harry Styles Beauty, where I kind of went on a very, very intentional conscious tangent that was on purpose, came back to Harry Styles Beauty like, what? When I was painting his face, I started seeing his face in all other men. (laughs) I would look at other men and be like, whose face is that? Oh my goodness. I'm like, oh my goodness, that's Harry. Literally, something happened. Like, once I put his face on that canvas and I painted it, it got, like, burned into my freaking memory. And I'll be watching a movie, looking at an actor, like, who does he do? Like, why? I'm looking at this man, but I'm not, I'm, I can only see Harry. What in the world? It's just. Something I hadn't experienced before. But I think the canvas has infinite power. That's why I, I choose and I prefer to paint. I stopped painting because... In high school or just in school in general the systems it's not art it's work you get great you get told what to do you get told to be you get told how to think and i just didn't like it i don't like being told what to do or who to be or what to think that's one of the quickest ways to make me run So, falling back in love with the canvas made me realize how essential it is for my freaking sanity. <laughs> because there's no other power like putting a freaking brush on a canvas. There's no colors, just nothing but your freaking imagination and your heart. And I was just so excited to get Harry on that canvas because once I get an image in my head, I have to get it out or it's going to like actually make me cry (laughs) because it will just be in my head all day and I won't be able to think about anything else except for this image. I just kept seeing Harry Styles. It's the photo from his, I think it's Vogue. I think it's Vogue from the Vogue shoot that he did a few years ago. Where I think the cover photo is him with this really, really large, like, baby blue gum or something. Or maybe it's a balloon. Oh, no, I think it's a balloon. 
but I remember getting that issue in the mail and being like whoa Harry Styles and I used to make these collages on my walls where I would cut things and I would I would make just a collection of my thoughts using pictures and I used to use the Vogue magazines I used to get them in the mail I don't get them in the mail anymore but every time a Vogue like issue would come I would cut it up and put it on my wall <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute that just that just like <laughs> they're putting all that work into making this magazine all perfect and then i get it and i just tear it to shreds and just recreate it <laughs> but anyways i remember getting the harry styles one and being like whoa harry styles i'm not even really a fan but i use those pictures and so that's the only reference that I have as to where my inspiration could possibly be coming from. And one of those photos from the time is him in front of this beautifully bright red, like blood red wall. And he's just standing there, just looking. But the thing is, he wasn't in my imagination, in the image. He was brown, like like a deep brown skin. And so I had some hesitance for a minute because I'm like, mm, do I really want to paint him the way that I see him? Ooh. I really want to paint him the way that I see him. With his deep brown skin like this. But I need to get the image out of my head, so... I ended up giving him this really beautiful brown... Deep brown skin tone. With his face and, you know, his, his eyes and all that stuff, you know. <laughs> it's him. He's just a little bit, you know, a little bit. A little bit more. Tan. But it helped. It helped. It helped me overcome whatever, like, block, block I was, wall I was trying to get through creatively, artistically. My decision to paint him the way that I saw him rather than the way that he was. In reality, and I felt like I chose that, that decision. Man, it gave me back my power, I feel like, the fact that I had the decision to... See things my way and create the world the way that I see it. And I don't have to just settle with the way that it looks. <laughs> now, I'm not in any way saying that, oh, Harry Styles should be brown skin. Like, no, I'm not saying that the man is beautiful exactly the way that he is. I just think maybe, maybe, hmm. When I paint things, it's more of a reflection. And especially with men, but with hairstyles just in particularly, like if we're talking about hairstyles in relation to my painting of him, I kind of feel like that's the point. Like, to some extent, his skin is kind of like a blink. I mean, he also has tattoos all over his body, so he's using his body like a canvas anyway. But I think for me, <clears throat> excuse me, I think for me, being a painter, and knowing that there's a reason why I see things, why I see the world in a way that I do. In fact, that I cannot. I even tried to wash it off in the shower. <laughs> like, the, the, the visual, the sight of him 
with this brown skin. But then I also had a realization in the shower. I was like, you know what? Maybe, maybe that's my reality of him. You know, like maybe that's how I perceive him no matter what. And that's okay. I mean, I'm brown. It would make sense that in my world I see a reflection of myself. And that just by way of nature I would fill in, you know, just empty spaces with me like I would give him that part of me my brown skin like in my mind clearly because I did (laughs) I gave him my brown skin in my mind (laughs) and maybe like maybe that's who I am as a lover like as an artist I share all of the things about myself that I perceive as gifts because gifts are meant to be shared And so once I gifted him my brown skin, the next painting that I made, I gifted him brown skin. And it was just like everybody was being gifted brown skin after that. And it was just, I made my world the brown, the brown being that I am. After that, after I painted Harry, Nothing was the same. Being brown became my power. It became my power after that. Because before then, being brown is not something that you are taught to perceive as an advantage. You are told to see it as a disadvantage. No matter how it's presented to you, you know, whether that's when you look at the systems and you see the oppression, you see the discrimination, you see the racism. And I feel like because of that, there's also this victimization that happens with good intent, you know, it's still victimization. And I think all of those things can be internalized and you can see your brown skin as like, your worst enemy. But, you know, when I realized that I could literally gift my world the brownness that I have, and there's no, there, there's no feeling that can compare to that. No, 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 no. <laughs> I would want every brown person to see their brown skin as a gift. Because I think it's supposed to be that way. Okay. I think I got everything off my chest. (laughs)